Well, good morning, everybody. It's a great day to be in church today, amen? All right, so we're in the last one of This Is Us. And uh, in this series, we've been talking about the vision and the purpose of this church and going through our core values. And so if you're new here, this is a great time to be joining us to, to hear all of this. And uh, it, it's been a nice refresher to uh, get back to the basics and just, uh, you know, remember what we're about. Remember why we come to church. Remember why we do what we do uh, in all of this. And so uh, it's, it's been a great series. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, talking about it. And so uh, our purpose here at Believers Community Church, if you can throw that on the screen for me up there, uh, our purpose is to help people to connect with Jesus in a life-changing way. That's the most important thing uh, that we do, right? Uh, we help people to connect with Jesus in a life-changing way, give them a place to feel like family, and find their purpose so that they can make a difference. And uh, I believe that as we keep that in front of us, that we can... Uh, that, that God will use this church in a mighty way. Uh, and so, uh, but we've been talking through our core values. Uh, you know, number one is Jesus is our message. Jesus is our message. Uh, if, if Jesus is not our message, then uh, we're doing it wrong, right? Uh, we need to have Jesus, uh, what he did for us on the cross, because none of this is possible without Jesus, uh, you know, becoming human and uh, coming to earth, dying on the cross, and all that, so that, uh, but that is our message, that is what we preach. Number two is God's Word is our foundation. I believe that the Bible is God's Word, it doesn't contain God's Word, but it is God's Word. Every word in there is inspired by the Holy Spirit that was written down by man, and, and that we need to have that as our foundation. We need to be in God's Word every day, and and studying and meditating and renewing our mind in God's Word because the way God has, uh, has us doing things is different than the world does, right? And so we need to learn God's way so that we can do it God's way. Last week we talked about uh, the next two is love is our response. Love is our response. What is that in response to? It's in response to God's love. It's a response to the, of what Jesus did for us. It's a response in making God's Word our foundation. As we respond to God, our response should always be love. Now, that's easy to do, right? No, it's not. <laughs> that is not easy to do. But with the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, and as uh, you know, we are uh, in relationship with Jesus, and we're renewing our mind in God's Word, and we have that relationship with God, and He's renewing us, the Bible tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is, first of all, what? Love. That's the first thing that produces in our life is love, and that we can love with that love. Love should be our response. And number four is family is our heart. Family is our heart. I believe that the body of Christ is supposed to be like family. Now, I know some of y'all don't have the best family. You don't have the best concept of family. And so we're out to change that in your mind because family is there to support each other. They're there to lift each other up, to help each other. Uh, sometimes to be there to say, hey, hey, dummy, you need to quit doing this. You know, uh, you know it, that's what family is for is to be there to, to make each other better and to support each other, uh, especially in the hard times. And so family is our heart. So we're going to be talking about the last two today. Uh, number five is adding value is our responsibility. Adding value is our responsibility. See, we're talking about investing in people. We need to purposely be investing in people, don't we? Because I believe that uh, adding value is at the very heart of the gospel. I mean, that's what Jesus did for us, right? Our lives were worth nothing, and He came and He added value to us. We didn't deserve that, but He came in, and, and what He did for us on the cross added value to us, and now we're no longer sinners, right? But now we are righteous, we are holy. Are y'all with me today? Okay, just making sure. That's a good place to shout right there. We're no longer sinners, but we're righteous and we're holy. And it's all because of Jesus, and He added that to our lives. And so adding value to people is at the very heart of the gospel. See, I believe that people should walk away better 
because they had an interaction with us. Okay? People shouldn't walk away less because they had an encounter with you. But they should walk away better. They should walk away encouraged. They should walk away feeling seen, feeling loved in their life. And so adding value to people as it is at the very heart of the gospel. We should be in the, the, the business of improving people's lives. All right, But before we can begin to add value to people's lives we got to have a heart check within ourselves, all right? See, first, we must see people as worth investing in, okay? If you don't see someone as worth investing in, then you're probably not going to add anything to their life. Now, I know on the surface, there's some people that you'd just rather avoid and just like me, like, mm. You know, I'll let someone else deal with that one, right? But I believe that God brings people into our lives for a reason. I believe He brings some tough people in our lives for a reason. Because He wants us to add value to them. But if I never see them as valuable, then I'm never going to invest my time and what God has given me into them. And so we've got to learn to see people through the eyes of God. When he looks at me, he doesn't see me in all of my failures. He doesn't see me in, in, in all my past sin and all the th- bad things that I've done. That's the way a lot of times we look at people, right? We judge them based on their past. We judge them based on current things. But see, when God looks at me, as the blood of Jesus is applied to my life, he sees Jesus in me. And he loves Jesus, right? And he loves me. And so he sees me as valuable. I was so valuable to God that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for me. The same thing for you. And we've got to learn to see people through the eyes of God instead of through our natural eyes. Because a lot of people will look at me and be like, they're a lost cause, sorry. But there's no lost causes to God. And we need to be willing to use what God's given us to help other people's lives better. All right. This is the, the concept that we talked about last week of honor. We talked about how we need to honor one another, and the Bible commands us to honor one another. And we said honor means, uh, it, it means something that is valuable or weighty. And so if, if uh, we are to honor one another, right, we need to see each other as valuable first, and then we need to look, if we truly honor people, we will add value to that the best that we can. And so how do we add value to people? I believe that there's lots of different ways, lots of different areas that we need to. Uh, first of all, we need to add value to people spiritually. We need to add value to people spiritually. We need to be a spiritual influence in our lives. We need to be a spiritual influence in our world. Because Lord knows this world needs some spiritual influence, a good spiritual influence. How do we influence people spiritually? First of all, through love. I mean, if love is our response to what God's done for us in our life, one of the best things that you can do for somebody is to show them love when they're not being lovely. To show them grace when when they're not acting right. That's one of the best ways that we do, because that's what Jesus did for us, right? Jesus didn't come to us because we had stuff together. He came to us because we were lost, and that we were broken, and that we needed We needed Him. And so He came with His love and His grace. How else can we add value to people spiritually? It's through discipleship. Now that's one of those fun words that that we talk about in the church sometime, and I don't think we truly understand the concept of, of what discipleship is, because discipleship was never meant to be a program at the church. I don't know if you knew that or not. It was never meant to be programmed in a church for discipleship. If we look at how Jesus discipled his people, what was it? He walked around with them every day, and as things were going on in life, he spoke into them and he discipled them in that moment. He said, hey, do you see that wheat field over there? The word of God is like a seed planted in your heart. 
There's going to be different responses to God's word. And, and, and he taught them in that moment of something that was going on right then and there. And so discipleship is meant to be done life on life, in everyday life. As you go through life with the people that God has placed around you, you are supposed to be a spiritual influence in their life and be discipling people. Think of it this way. Show and, uh, discipleship is show and tell. Okay, You live this out. And as people see you living this out, you get to tell people about it. That's what discipleship is. You living out your life before people. And then as they begin to question and ask, like, hey, why is your life different? Why are you not stressed out in this moment when everything's falling apart? Well, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about what God's done in my life. Let me tell you why I don't have to stress about every little thing. Because I trust in an all-powerful God. And, and, and we can disciple people in everyday life. And we need to be adding value to people spiritually around us. One of the easiest ways to do that is, is, is praying for people. You don't even have to talk to people to be able to do that. All right? You can do that from afar. Because I know some of you are just like, man, I don't know about it. Man. Start praying for people. Start with this prayer. God, let me see... Terry, as you see him. God, show me ways that I can invest in Terry. And, and, and you know, whoever, whoever it is in your life, just begin with that prayer right there. And you'll be amazed at how God begins to change your heart. If that's a real prayer in your life, not just words that you're saying. Right. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's difference. I'll pray for you, brother. I'm, I'm a little scared for some people to pray for me. What, what do you pray? Before we agree to this, what are you pray, going to pray for me, right? So we need to be investing in people spiritually. We need to be investing in people emotionally. See, this is one that doesn't get talked about a lot at church. See, since COVID hit, there's been this big push talking about mental health. And, and, and taking care of yourself emotionally and all that. And, and, you know, when it first started, you know, I was kind of, you know, I'm, I'm a skeptical person by nature. And so, you know, anything new like that happens, I'm just like, Psh, whatever, you know. And just anybody else like that, you know, you, you know, they started talking about this. And, of course, it goes to extremes, right? Uh, you know, there's universities that had cry rooms for their students to go and cry in. I, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it might have been really helpful for people. I don't know, but I mean, I can cry anywhere. I, mean, I don't need a, a special room for me to go in. And but anyway, but but mental health is actually a, a big deal, and it, it's one of the big things that uh, you know the world is talking about now. And and I think it is a good thing that we do need to learn how to take care of ourselves. You know, instead of just like well, we'll, we'll just handle this. You know, but but actually take care of yourself. Emotionally, when I talk about emotionally, you know, we all have this inner dialogue that goes on the inside of us, don't we? Anybody ever just talk to themselves? I talk to myself a lot. You know, I usually try to wait till I'm alone before I do it, but it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, so if you ever hear me talking to myself, don't, I'm not crazy. Well, not all the way. I was in youth ministry for 20 years, so there's a little bit of crazy there. But, um, but we all have this inner dialogue that goes on, on the inside of us. And, and, and just stop and think, what is your inner dialogue about yourself? See, for a lot of us, we just think how awful we are. And, and we're very judgmental towards ourselves. And, and, and so, some of that is healthy, but it, a lot of times it goes way unhealthy. That we do need to judge ourselves, we do need to judge our hearts and look at things, but we don't need to be judgmental towards ourselves. And that we need to have a healthy inner dialogue within ourselves. And, and where we get that is God's Word. Because there's not a lot of good within me naturally. But with God, He put a lot of good on the inside of me. And so I need to be having this be my inner dialogue instead of what the world's saying about me. I need to be saying, like, okay, God, you know, I, I know that I've failed on many things, but God, what are you saying about me? 
that I'm more than a conqueror through Him who loves me, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do whatever God places in front of me because He strengthens me to be able to do that. I'm more than a conqueror. And, and we can have this inner dialogue of God's Word on the inside of us and that we need to be adding to that in people's lives. That we don't need to point out everybody's faults. Parents, we don't need to be pointing out all of our kids' faults all the time and begin inserting God's Word into their life in those situations instead. We need to be speaking life to our spouses. Don't all the time just be bickering and fighting and, and nagging and all that stuff, but we need to be speaking life into our spouse. We need to add value to people emotionally. We need to add good into, to their inner dialogue that they have going on in their life. We need to be careful with our words of what we're saying to people because life and death is in the power of the tongue, isn't it? And so what are we using our words for? Are we using words to build up or are we using our words to tear down? We need to add value to people emotionally. Speak life into people. How else can we... Invest in people, we need to do it physically. By serving each other. By meeting needs. You know, James talks about this, you know, if you see a brother and sister in need, and you just say, hey, be warm and filled, and God bless you, and you go and do nothing, what good is that? If you have the means to help somebody, help them. See, here's the thing that we get into is that a lot of times we think that, well, if I give this stuff away or if I give money away or if I give my time away, then I'm just giving stuff away. But that's not how it works in the kingdom of God. Because nothing that I have belongs to me anyway. I am a steward of what God's given me. I don't even own my own life anymore. See, when I gave my life to Jesus, it's His now, not mine. And so I just get to be a steward over my life. And so everything that I have, I know that, that God has given to me. And so uh, God has given it to me just not for me, but for other people as well. And I believe the more that I'm willing to give, that God's going to give me more so I can keep giving out. And, and that's the process of sowing and reaping in our lives. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over so I can have a big bank account. No. So that we can keep giving out, and we can keep giving out. And that we can invest in people physically, by serving people, by meeting needs, by speaking life into people. And as a church, we, need, we do this through outreach. I, I know the CR leadership team, they just did an outreach. They went to the laundromat and, and gave out hot dogs and paid for people's laundry. What a practical way to reach into somebody's life. Because a lot of times, the ones that are going to the laundromat, they don't have a lot. And they're spending their quarters right in the machines. And you're just like, I don't know if I want to put another quarter in this dryer or not. You know, and if we were there to pay for that and to, to love them and to spend some time with them and, and invest in them. Let me tell you something. The world's not investing in a lot of people. And that we need to be a force in this world for good and for love. And that, that the church should be known for their generosity. Well, that went over well on that one. Woo! But we do that through outreach. We do that through missions. See, when you give on Sunday morning, you know, part of the money goes out to missions uh, here in this community. Uh, it goes out to missions across the world. And, and so as you are investing your money and giving money, and, and that you're adding value to people all over the world, that you have no clue, you might not ever meet these people. And you're adding value to them in a physical way. And if you look, at the, look into the gospel, if you look into Paul's life, now a lot of times they would go in to a place, and we see this in missions. This is one of the, uh, the ways you do missions, that you go into a place that maybe they've never heard the gospel or they don't have a church or whatever, and you go in and you physically meet some needs for them. Because that's the immediate thing that people notice you know, if someone just comes in and just preaches something and leaves, and they're just like, okay, that was great, you know, whatever. But if you come in and you give them some clothes and you give them some food to eat and you, you bless them physically, their hearts are open to the gospel then. Because you've shown your love before you tell your love. 
It's that whole idea of show and tell again, right? As we show our love to people, as we show Jesus to people, then they're going to be open and receptive to the gospel. Here, here in the next month or so, we're going to give you an opportunity to, uh, to sow into such a ministry. And, and we've done this several times in the past of, of giving you opportunities to, uh, to, to drill wells in other countries and, and, and villages that don't have fresh water. And, and uh, one of the projects that, that is near and dear to my heart is there is a, uh, a village in Honduras that is in desperate need of a school and a church. Uh, this is one that we visited several times down there. It's San Juan uh, is the name of the village. And I mean, it's, it's remote. I mean, it's up on the mountain. Like we drive, like we're in the mountains already. Like when we land in the capital city, we drive for like three hours to one uh, town. Then the next day we drive another three hours up into the mountains, up in the middle of nowhere. And to get to this village, there's another hour and a half drive and about a mile hike to get to these people. I mean, they're out there. I mean, they, I mean it's just out there on the side of a mountain. But they don't have a church. They have a Catholic priest that comes through about every three months. And that's it. These people are hungry for the gospel. In fact, when we showed up, we were, one of the, we were the first um, foreign mission team to ever come into this village. And that I got to preach the gospel to them. And it was an exciting moment to see God begin to move and begin to... Uh, build relationships, uh, you know, with the people there. And, and God placed it on my heart that he, he wants a church in that village. Right? They need the gospel. They need consistent discipleship in their life. And so we have this opportunity to be able to provide that for them. And, and so we're going to start talking about this a little bit next month. But uh, I've, I've been talking to the people down in Honduras, and we've been working on it, and it's going to cost about $17,000 to build this building for them. And when they do, they're going to have a school where they can go and learn. And there's going to be a pastor that goes that lives in that village to disciple them. We have an opportunity to add value to some people. And so we're going to give you an opportunity to, to give towards this mission uh, I don't have a date when we're going to do the offering yet, but I want to start talking about it now. And, and I want you to begin to pray, God, is this something that you want me to be part of? Because here's the thing at this church, we don't force you to give to anything. All right, We believe that it needs to be your decision as, as you pray and you ask God that uh, you allow Him to tell you what you need to do. And so we're going to give you this opportunity to sow into this, uh, this village in San Juan, Rio Blanco, Olancho, Honduras. It's going to be awesome. And so anyway, that's going to be something that we have coming up next month. We'll, we'll talk about it. And so basically what we're looking at as we are, are talking about adding value is that we need to have a servant's heart. A servant's heart. And we see this in Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 3. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. That's what we're talking about, adding value to people. And that's what honor is, in, is valuing people. So in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but to each of you, to the interests of other. In your relationship with, other, with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. I love this analogy that he's about to give us. Right? He said, have the same mindset that Jesus had when he came here on the earth. He said, who in being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. What is he trying to say here? He said, Jesus, who, who is God, was sitting in heaven, and he decided that he would empty himself of all of his godly power and come live on earth like you and me. That's a pretty big humbling, isn't it? I mean, you're all-powerful God, so you become like us. Right? I mean, that's a major difference there. He said he humbled himself to that. And he didn't just humble himself to that, but he came and he became a servant to us. Right? That's underneath. When you serve somebody, that's... You know, you're adding, you know, you're. And so he humbled himself to service. Not only that, he, he humbled himself to die the worst death possible. 
a criminal's death. And that's how much he humbled himself to serve us. And he's saying, Paul's saying here to us, right here, he said, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So we, he's saying, we need to learn to humble ourselves and to serve one another and, and give and do whatever that we need to do to lift other people up. We need to add value to other. See, we don't exist for ourselves, but we exist for others. The sooner we catch on to this concept, the more we're going to be like Christ. See, Jesus didn't come down here so that he could set up an earthly kingdom and be like, I'm your ruler now, y'all bow down to me. No, he came to serve and to add value to mankind. And so we, as reflections of Jesus, we need to learn that we don't exist for ourselves anymore. But we exist to serve one another. In fact, we don't even belong to ourselves anymore. We see in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, Do you, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you and whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. He says, You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. What better way to honor God with our bodies than to serve Him and to serve each other? Amen? All right. Adding value is our responsibility. Number six, relevance is our pursuit. Relevance is our pursuit. Why is relevance our pursuit? Because the gospel is relevant to every person on planet Earth. The gospel is relevant to every person on planet Earth. See, it says in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you. Thank goodness He's patient with us. Not wanting anyone to perish, but to everyone come to repentance. See, the gospel is for every person. And, and the gospel is relevant today. There's a lot of people that look at the Bible and say, well, that's just an old book. It's not relevant today. Oh, it's just as relevant today as it's always been. It's even more relevant today than it was back then. Why? Because we all need the gospel. We all need Jesus in our lives. The reason why relevance is our pursuit, because this world needs Jesus, and Jesus is hopefully found in this church, right? And I believe that as long as we are reaching out into our community and loving and serving, that we will always be relevant in our community. See, this word relevance, I, I, I'm a nerd and I looked it up because that's what I do. But relevance, it says, having a significant bearing on the matter at hand. Don't you know Jesus has a significant bearing at the matter at hand? This world needs Jesus more than ever. It also means practical and social applicability. See, Jesus applies everywhere. It's not just to the church. It's not just to a certain group of people. But Jesus is applicable everywhere, practically and socially, in our lives. See, I heard someone ask this question once, and, and I think it's spot on. It says, if our church ceased to exist, would anybody notice or even care? If Believer's Community Church just disappeared tomorrow, would our community notice or even care that we're gone? I hope they do. I hope that they would notice and care because I believe that we need to be making an impact in our community. And I believe that we are. So how many of you recognize this sound? You ready, T? How many of y'all recognize this sound right here? Isn't that an awful sound? Oh, it gets worse. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Ooh. Some of you are laughing because you know you've been there. Others are just like, what? It's a bunch of noise right there. When dial-up internet hit the market, it was one of the best things in the world, right? How many of y'all got one of these in the mail like every single day? America Online wanted your business. Dial-up internet. Man, when that first came out, man, it was awesome. You'd go in there and you'd start up your computer and you heard that noise as you connected to the internet. 
Then you went and made a sandwich, took a bath. <laughs> came back, it was almost ready. And man, you can get on there and you could chat with people. You, I, I don't know if that was before Google or not. You could Google something. You could ask Jeeves something. You know, you had the paperclip and Microsoft Word. You know, all that. Man, it was the greatest thing. But now we hear that and we just all kind of cringe like, ooh, I remember those days. Because we have high-speed internet now. Right, man, we can click on something that's there and like point. Google always tells you how quick it, it worked. It was here in point one seconds, right? And that's how fast it is. And so, but, but you know, we think about old technology and how wonderful it was back then, but now it's just kind of cringy, right? I don't want to be a cringy church. I don't want to be something that used to be relevant and no longer is, like they just look at it and like, mm. I got another one for you here. Some of y'all recognize this. Right here. Look at this. Check this out. Anybody remember this? Man, when this thing hit the market, you are somebody. If you had one of these babies, you are somebody. You know, if you had it in your car, you had this antenna that you put on top of the car. Had like the strongest magnet in the world, man. Poof. And if you saw someone driving around town with that on their seat, you're like, mm, there's somebody, look at there. They got one of these babies. They got a phone in their car. Now every single one of us, right? We got it right here. In fact, this phone right here, as Ella was turning 13, she begged for a phone. I, I didn't warn you I was going to tell this story. But she was begging for a phone. I was like, man, Dad, I need a phone. I need a phone. I need a phone. I said, and, and I told her time and time again, I said, we'll get you a flip phone. You know, that's where all people need to start was with the flip phone, right? How many of y'all had the Razor, Motorola Razor, man? That thing was indestructible, dude. You could not break that thing. And, and so, and then I found, when we bought our house, we found this in our house right here. We found all kinds of good goodies in there. I got an old Polaroid camera and all that stuff. But I remembered I had this. I said, Ella, I'm going to give you this phone right here. This is going to be your first phone. And let me tell you something, I tried to activate this phone, too. I, I mean, I was making phone calls. Nobody will activate it anymore. But anyway, and so she told me, said, Dad, if you give me that, I'm going to cry. <laughs> and so I wrapped this dude up for her for her 13th birthday, <laughs> and I gave it to her. She was less than impressed, let me just say that. And then I gave her a real phone that, that actually works and stuff. But, but that's what we're talking about. You know, this stuff used to be amazing. Now it's not even useful. I don't want to be that as the church. I don't want to be that as the church. I want to be relevant to here and today. I never want to get to a place to where we're just like, oh, well, that, that church used to be something, but now they're just a bunch of old fogies over there that do a Bible study and that's it. See, this is what the Great Commission is about right here. It's about going into all the world and Preaching the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that is written. And see, that's what we need to be doing. How do we stay relevant? We see Jesus, and it talks about this in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. He says, And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Then Jesus, he was anointed first with the Holy Spirit and power. It says, Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Do you know that we have this same Holy Spirit and power in our life now? See, when Jesus was here, he's the one that had it. But then on the day of Pentecost, he poured the Holy Spirit out into the earth, and that now every believer has the Holy Spirit and power in their life. And what do we need to be doing with that? We need to be going around doing good, and telling people about Jesus so that he can bring healing to their life. This is how we stay relevant. Is that we do the Great Commission. But see, as the example of Jesus, he went around doing good first. A lot of times he went into the village first and he, he began to heal people. There's signs, wonders, and miracles. And after that happened, people were like, okay, this dude is somebody. This dude's got something to say. Let's listen to him. And he was able to speak the kingdom of God into their lives. And this needs to be the same thing with us. Is that we need to, if we want to stay relevant, we need to be going out and doing good. 
in bringing Jesus to this world so that there can be healing in this world. And we do it all through the Holy Spirit and the power that He has given us. See, we add value to people. By adding value to people, we stay relevant. By adding value to people, we stay relevant. These two go hand in hand. And this is our reach out that we talk about in our mission statement. So just to kind of recap real fast about our core values. And I, I would love for all of you to memorize these. I know that's a big ask. I know that you're not all going to do it. But I, I believe that these are some things that not only we need to believe as a church, but as individuals, we could live these out in our lives. And I believe that we would be fulfilling the gospel in our lives. As number one is Jesus is our message. Jesus is the number one thing. If we ever get away from Jesus, we're getting away from the gospel itself. Number two is God's word is our foundation. We always need to keep God's word first and foremost as our source to where we learn and that we grow and that we renew our minds. It, when we stop reading the Bible, we stop growing. Love is our response. Our response in life always needs to be in love. Family is our heart. We need to learn to reach into our family and for support and to support each other. Adding value is our responsibility and relevance is our pursuit. Amen? I, I believe that we could all live by these and that if we could, I mean, even if we live by like three of these, right, we'd be ahead of the game in this. So as we wrap up today, as usual, we're going to have a time of worship and response. Today, why did God speak into your life? What is it that, that the Holy Spirit kind of stirred up in you today? Before you walk out of this room, I want you to respond to God about this thing. Maybe it's you need to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Maybe it is you need, you've walked away from God in your life and you need to come back to Him. We're going to have our prayer team up here. Come and pray. The altar's open. Come. If you need to kneel before God and give something to Him... Here's an opportunity to do this. I want you to respond to God in this moment. Let's get to our feet and let's worship.